Hello everyone, today I'm going to be talking about active transport and ABC transporters. ABC transporters are ATP binding cassette transporters. They contain an ATP binding cassette which can bind and hydrolyze ATP and it, and it is the ATP that provides the energy for substrate efflux or influx. So ATP driven transporters are driven by the hydrolysis and binding of ATP. So this is the general schematic of a transporter. There are transmembrane domains, two transmembrane domains, and two nucleotide binding domains which are located in the cytoplasm. ATP binds and hydrolyzes at the nucleotide binding domains and provides the power to transport substrates out of the cell. So the human ABC transporter family contains 48 members uh, in seven subfamilies ranging from subfamily A through G. The, the general structure of an ABC transporter here is a structure of P glycoprotein and as I mentioned here is one transmembrane domain and here is another transmembrane domain. So in general transporters have six transmembrane alpha helices per domain. So in PGP this transporter has 12 transmembrane alpha helices and two nucleotide binding domains. So what is PGP or P-glycoprotein? P-glycoprotein is a human multidrug transporter. It can transport a variety of drugs out of the cell. So this is active transport. It's driven by ATP and PGP can efflux drugs out of cells. PGP is an integral plasma membrane protein because it contains transmembrane alpha helices and it is an efflux pump. It pumps in an outward direction powered by ATP. So this is how it basically can pump drugs out of cells. So here you can see the drug entering the cell. So this is the outside of the cell. This is the inside and this is the plasma membrane and as the drug enters the cell it is recruited by the transporter from the lipid bilayer itself and it binds to the substrate binding site in the transporter. Subsequently what happens is that ATP binds to the nucleotide binding domains and then it hydrolyzes forming ADP and phosphate and releasing a large amount of energy. It is this energy that causes a conformational change in PGP by which it can now efflux the drug out of the cell. So the transmembrane alpha helices come together to form the drug translocating pathway or a pore-like structure through which the drug is effluxed and the NBDs form the catalytic domain where ATP is bound and is hydrolyzed providing the power to pump the substrate or efflux the substrate out of the cell. So this is a recent model of substrate transport in mouse PGP. So here you can see the substrate binding to the transporter, which is in the inward facing state. And here is ATP in yellow binding to the transporter. After ATP binding and hydrolysis, there's a conformational change in the transporter, which opens up the transporter to the outward facing configuration and then the substrate can be effluxed out of the cell. So basically ATP binding and hydrolysis provide the power for the pump. So what role do ABC transporters play in cancer? So they basically have two roles. 
they can cause multidrug resistance in cancer cells, and they're also highly expressed in cancer stem cells. So we're going to be talking about multidrug resistance. So what is multidrug resistance? It's a phenomenon in which tumor cells selected for resistance to a single agent or a single drug become cross-resistant to several structurally and functionally unrelated compounds. And what happens is there is reduced intracellular accumulation of drugs because these anti-cancer drugs are pumped out by ABC transporters. Therefore, the cancer cell may pump the drug out of the cell as fast as it comes in. We, we don't want this to happen because these are cancer cells. We're adding or we're dosing a patient with anti-cancer drugs to kill the cancer cells. And if the cancer cell is pumping out the drug through P-glycoprotein, then that cancer cell is surviving and is not being killed. So basically what you need to do is you need to inhibit the functioning of these efflux pumps or stop them from functioning so that they can no longer efflux anti-cancer drugs out of the cell. So there are different kinds of inhibitors that were developed in order to inhibit the functioning of P-glycoprotein. So these can fall into two major classes, competitive inhibitors and allosteric modulators. So competitive inhibitors are high affinity substrates of the pump and they can inhibit drug transport by preventing substrate association. What does that mean? It means they prevent uh, drug transport by preventing the substrate from binding to the pump. Because these competitive inhibitors have a higher affinity than the substrate, what that means is that the pump is kept busy by pumping out these competitive inhibitors so as it can't pump out the anti-cancer drug and the anti-cancer drug remains inside the cell. Allosteric modulators, on the other hand, don't compete for the substrate interaction site, but still can inhibit drug transport. So let's talk about competitive inhibitors. So in orange is the competitive inhibitor. So now we see in green the anti-cancer drug entering the cell and trying to be recruited by PGP, but because the competitive inhibitor has a greater affinity for the pump, it is pumped out instead of PGP. Therefore, the pump is kept busy pumping out the inhibitor and allows the anti-cancer drug to enter the cell and hopefully kill the cancer cell. So what happens in allosteric inhibition? So this is the allosteric inhibitor, and this inhibitor can bind to PGP at a site which is distinct or different from the substrate binding site. Once it is bound, it causes a conformational change in PGP. And due to this conformational change, PGP is now non-functional and cannot efflux the anti-cancer drug from inside the cell. So in summary, ABC transporters are ATP-driven transporters. There are 48 human ABC transporters. P-glycoprotein is one of the transporters which is responsible for multidrug resistance in cancer cells. And PGP inhibition can be an important strategy to fight cancer drug resistance.